Okay, I just want to show you a little bit of technique here. I'm using this um, 3M blue painter's tape and uh, just kind of show you how to do it. I just kind of hold it up and I'll cut it. You can just tear it easily too, but um, sometimes it just fits a little better when you cut it. Then I'll just tear it right down the middle because I don't want to waste it. You don't need all this width. Okay. Put some along right there along the edge. There's not a whole lot of uh, detail. In fact, there's no detail on the bottom of this orbiter. Um, but at the same time, you want um, to have the width of your of your putty line somewhat consistent so that when you sand it, uh, it feathers, you know, evenly. So I'll usually use um, this tape for every seam unless I'm using the putty that I've talked about before, which is basically thinned out uh, like a paste uh, and then applied, you know, with the brush directly to the seam. Uh, a lot of times I'll use that with smaller seams, but this is such a big, big kit and it's got, um, you know, pretty large seams all over that I can't really use the paste um, too much there. But you get the idea. Um, I also want to point out uh, sometimes you'll use putty where there's not supposed to be a gap, um, or I should say rather there's where there's supposed to be a, a, a panel line and, and not a gap. I just want to point out here this here is supposed to be a hinged uh, elevator type assembly, but it didn't assemble really, really smooth. So I'm going to have to putty that whole thing up and rescribe that line. So even though there is supposed to be a break between the fuselage and this piece here, um, it's not clean enough um, for it to look professional. Also, Ravel Incorporated 1999 here. This kit dates back from the 70s. Uh, like I said, it's a monogram box now, but again, Ravel is the parent company, so they, sh they chose to put their logo in there. That'll get sanded off. Alright, so I'm just going to keep doing this. So this is the um, squadron green thinned out with acetone uh, in a bottle. There's a little seam here where these little cowlings went on. And I don't really want to take this off. It's a fairly minor seam. And uh, it's going to be hard to get in at a little bit. And this is a perfect application for just this putty. It's a small seam. It's kind of a paste mix of putty. So this is the kind of thing you'd use this for. Might take a couple of applications, but there you go.
Okay, there you are. I'll need to let that dry for maybe an hour or so, maybe, before I'll uh, start sanding on it. So I decided to, um, before doing any sanding, to put on the lanier doors. And uh, I just want to show you something real quick. Um, this is the nose gear door. And you can see here, it doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to have to trim up uh, the door or the, or the well uh, in order to make it fit. And then we go further back and here are the doors to the main gear. And these don't exactly fit either. Um, I think partially it's because of the alignment of of the wing to the body area, so it's probably my fault a little bit. But either way, I'm going to have to trim um, the door or the well or both up to get these to fit on, on both sides. So that's the best way to get the nose gear to fit. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, plastic here for this because I want a really strong bond. There's also not a lot of surface area here uh, to work with. There's a little tab um, on the, the back side of the door which uh, fits like right behind here. But all the way around the rest of it, nothing except the outer edge of the door itself. So there's not a whole lot to work with. But we'll do the best we can. If I build this again next time, I'm going to actually put some strip on the inside of here as a contact point for this door. That'd be a smart thing to do. Now this door is going to get puttied all around. So these gaps are really not going to matter. Alright, so um, we're going to go ahead and put the, um, put the main gear doors on. I've uh, test fitted them. They, they fit horribly and it's atrocious. But you got what you got. You got to work with what you got to work with. So it's obviously not designed to do this with. Um, the shuttle itself, even though I think it came originally as a stack, it um, clearly... The people that engineered this kit did not intend for the gear doors to be shut, or otherwise it wouldn't look like this. So I put a little testers glue on here to kind of tack them in place, and like I said, I shim the doors a lot, and that's what you got right there. And if you look at that close, you can tell there's quite a step down. All that's going to have to be filled in, um, so not so good. side now. There we go. Alright, so needless to say, I'm not impressed. 
um, that's going to take me some work, um, filling all this in to get it smoothed out, and the nose gear <laughs> really isn't much better. So, again, you work with what you got to work with. Uh, if this were a state-of-the-art you know, Japanese manufactured kit, you probably wouldn't have this problem, but since it's a, at this point, 40 year or so old um, mold, late 70s, um, I guess 30 year or so old mold, then uh, you know you have to deal with, with uh, what inaccuracies you get. I don't see uh, any new tool 70 second scale space shuttle kits on the horizon, so if you want to build one on the scale, you got the two um, kits to work with, the Ravel and the Monogram, and uh, neither is perfect, so you just got to deal with what, um, what they give you to work with. All right, so I'm not really happy with the amount of contact area these doors have on the inside of the fuselage. So I've decided to try to uh, strengthen those, strengthen those a little bit by adding some little styrene strips in there. Uh, I'm just concerned that when I go to sand these down that the doors are going to flex uh, as I'm standing from the outside and that's going to cause uh, the putty to crack and that's not going to make me very happy. So I've cut some little styrene strips. This is um, Evergreen styrene 125, 0.125 by 0.25 inches. So a quarter inch by about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to put some glue on here and stuff them in there. and. Uh, I'll follow it up with some uh, liquid glue all around the edges. And I'll do this on both sides. And hopefully that'll give these gear doors a little bit of added strength. Um, where they contact the fuselage and they'll have, hopefully have less of a tendency to flex when I'm uh, sanding from the outside. So it's a little tight in here. I'm trying to get in here. But uh, I'm managing. I thought about actually running the strip uh, lengthwise, lengthwise down the side of the gear door, but there's some little tabs there. If I'd uh, known this was going to be a problem, I could have sanded those off. But there's some little tabs there that would make that um, a little more difficult to do. So I just went ahead and did it like this. And now I'm going to run some. Uh, Plastruck in here. You'll notice that whenever I'm looking for a heavy duty job, I always go for the Plastruck device, the um, 10x or the Tamiya, extra thin. Simply because, again, in my experience, this is, as far as liquid glues go, this is the uh, toughest stuff you're gonna find. So I've got to be careful here. Don't want to put any drops on the outside of the shuttle as I'm trying to get the glue to the inside. But I want plenty there because I don't want it to move. Alright. So maybe you can see that in there. Yeah, hopefully you can. Um, but it's a real simple job. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure how much it's going to help, but it's going to help a little bit. I'm, I'm sure of that. Okay.